Hello, welcome to another episode of Wicked Easy Cooking. Today we're going to be working with watermelons. Let me ask you, have you ever carved a pumpkin before, maybe for Halloween? Great, but why just stop there? Why not carve a watermelon? They're available year round and there's plenty of opportunities, especially in the summer, to utilize watermelons and make a carving. So today I'm going to show you a wicked easy way to get a nice carving on this watermelon. And it's really quite simple because all we're going to do is take a pattern, put it on the watermelon and trace it onto the outside. It's that easy. Now there are tons of books out there as well as tools to help you do that. In the back here I happen to have some of these different books. Uh, there's some of the ones I've used before. There's Garnishing a Feast for Your Eyes, which is a pretty good one. It's got a lot of simple ones in there. Food Art, Garnishing Made Easy. We've got The Art of Food Sculpting, a little bit more difficult. Garnishes and Decorations. And the one that I think is the best for watermelon carving is you can create stunning watermelon carvings. And this one I like because it gives you a lot of patterns in the book that's included that you could then scribe onto your watermelon. So today I have this one, I'm not really sure, graduation. My son's graduating from eighth grade, my other son's graduated from high school this year, so thought this might be a fun one. Or, you know, just some flowers. And in this book, they actually rate these carvings as beginner or easy, intermediate, hard, so you can advance as much as you want, starting out with maybe a simple one. Now, watermelon carvings you may have seen in buffets, Sunday brunch. Maybe you've taken a cruise before and you see it in their buffets. When I worked for the cruise lines, I used to do all those uh, watermelon carvings, cantaloupes, honeydews, a lot of those fruit displays. They also teach it in school. But today it's going to be really, really simple. We're going to just go through the steps so you can do this at home as well. Okay, and today as you'll notice I have my knife shirt on. This was a gift. Someone sent it to me, gave it to me, so it has knives on it. So I thought it would be great since I'll be using knives today to carve to wear that rather than one of my chef coats. Now there's a lot of tools available for that too. And I'll put a picture in of these different ones. Now some of these are much more elaborate, uh, like the one in this roll-up kit, which is the one I used to use when I worked in the hotels and country clubs to do my carvings. Which all of this, the books and the tools, I'm going to put into the section below, the comments section in there, so you can have links to where you can buy all these. But I suggest just starting out with something simple, like an X-Acto knife kit. You know, they've got some pretty simple ones that you can get at a hobby store or probably pick up at, you know, Target or Walmart or something. And these are real helpful. And as you advance, there's different tools like these that have different shapes that are really great for, you know, carving out the pumpkins, as well as the V-cutters. I'll show you that technique a little bit later on how to make, you know, highlight or frame your watermelon carving. But today I'm just going to do it with something simple. We're going to do what they call the dot or the poke technique. So you just need something sharp to perforate into the watermelon to outline, you know, your design. So you could use like this little lobster or crab picker, which is great. I'll show you that one. You could use a skewer, wooden or metal, if you have one of those. Or even this one. This is a little like cheese display where you put a little sign in uh, to tell what cheese is on your cheese board. I'm going to use it because it has a nice little handle and I can poke that into the watermelon. So any of these would be easy to use. So figure out what's good for you. You're also going to need some type of stencil. Now I showed you these. I guess I'll do the graduation one today. But you can pick out any one. And if you don't have any stencils, you can find them online. Usually where you can find the pumpkin carving uh, sections, they'll probably have some stencils that you could print out. Or you could even use your kid's color book. This one is, uh, you know, Monsters, Inc. And this one is Dory. So you could even grab one of these from a book and use that as your outline. You just need something that you can trace and put into the, the actual watermelon. So let's get started. So the first thing you need is a good watermelon. So pick one out, try to not get any blemishes on it because that's going to be your carving. So try to get it all, you know, green and stuff. You don't want, you know, blemish areas like that, which is usually where it was laying on the ground. I just have a small one here and I've already washed it. You want to wash it because there's dust and dirt on it and you will be scribing into it. You're also, so it's round, so it doesn't roll around. I would get a tray or something that you can put it in so that way there it stays steady while you're carving. Then you're going to need 
whatever design you're going to use, whatever stencil that is. I'm going to use this graduation one. And you, what you want to do is print out two of them. Because one of them, we're going to actually stick to the watermelon, and the other one will be used as a reference. So you can step back periodically and look at it and see how you're doing, especially when we get into scraping away some of the flesh. So print out two of those. So uh, the other thing I recommend is get a chair. <laughs> you know, it, it's going to be a long little process, it's not something you want to rush. You can sit outside on your porch or at your kitchen table or wherever and just take your time and do this and it's going to come out perfect. So I'm going to get a chair, clean this up, and we're going to get started. Be right back. Okay, once you've picked your watermelon out at the store, it'll stay on the counter for weeks. But once you cut into it, of course, you're going to have to put it in the refrigerator. As mentioned, pick out one that, you know, has a, you know, blemish-free side and uh, you know, make sure it's pretty heavy. Put the bottom end down into some kind of pan to secure it. Make sure it's been washed and dried. And then, again, this is the orientation. You know, is it horizontal, landscape mode, or are you going to do it, you know, um, this way, or portrait? You know, most of them are a portrait, so you're going to go up with those, like this one's a portrait mode. So now we just have to pick out our stencil, attach it to the watermelon. And for that, you're going to need scotch tape and some scissors. Now, as I mentioned, if you want to get stencils, another great place is pumpkinglow.com, and I'll put this up here in the screen. Um, also, zombiepumpkins.com, great uh, stencils you can find there as well. Okay, so we have our pattern here. I'm going to cut it out some because I don't need all this extra paper. I'll just cut it kind of round here. This again is an easy one. You can get different styles. Yeah, cut it a little more this way. So you can see I have the pattern here. Now remember, this is a flat piece of paper and it's going on to a round item. So a lot of times you're going to have to cut, make slits in the side of the paper so that it can attach. So I'm going to make a cut here, see, so then it'll go around it, and make a cut on this side, here, maybe at the top, one at the bottom. So now, you know, it can fold over on itself. You want to get it so it adheres pretty good, and then you're going to take your tape and tape it. Okay, so I'm just putting the last piece of tape on here, and then I'll show it to you as a close-up. Not very pretty, but it's adhered. See it? Okay, so as mentioned, we're going to be using what they call the poking method. So we're going to take something sharp, right, and we're going to poke through the um, stencil into the rind of the watermelon making a mark. So then when we remove this stencil, we'll see it kind of traced in to the, you know, the outline into the rind of the melon. Okay, so I'm going to start the poking. So you can see here, I'm just poking those lines. I'm doing the small details first, just kind of going around the edge here, poking it in. You can, again, you can use any poker you want. This is that little cheese sign I was telling you about. It's a little bit smaller, so it's nicer for the, you know, the finer details. Come up to the edge here, come around. But you could also use a skewer, but I wouldn't use it in something this small, but maybe in this larger part. And you don't want to go too, too deep. So we're going to actually use a tool to cut all this away afterwards. But I think this lobster picker works pretty good for these little small ones. It's got a little angle. I can angle it away. Ooh, see how it comes off there? And then we'll go down this one. And you just do this. Again, sitting down, relaxing. Do it while you're watching TV. Do it out on the porch if it's a nice day, you know, maybe in the summer. Getting ready for a 4th of July picnic. You want to display your artwork. Oops. Okay, and as I mentioned, you want to cut the smaller designs. You know, maybe something like this. Smaller details before the larger ones, because the paper can rip as we just saw. And you want to cut the inside details before generally cutting the outside details, because there's water going to come up. So work from the inside of the design outward, or top to bottom, or from one side to the other. But pick some kind of pattern, especially when you get into some of the detailed ones. Okay, I'm going to keep doing this. I don't want to bore you, 
but you got the idea. And we'll be back when I finish all of these lines. Okay, so we're pretty much done here. You can see we taped the pattern to the surface of the melon using, you know, this scotch tape, transparent tape. And again, we had to cut slits here and there periodically um, around the edges here to help conform the flat piece of paper to the melon. And then we used anything sharp. I used this little lobster picker thing here um, to poke holes through the paper into the surface of the melon. We did it about, you know, every eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, you know, just to make sure it's a good pattern. Um, you know, if they're larger areas, you could do it farther apart, but you know, this helps us a lot. And so now we're all finished. We get to remove the pattern and we're going to see this design into the melon. So let's do that right now. And you can see why we have the other one as a reference because this one is all junk now and we can see you know i can see that in there i'm not sure if it shows up on the camera that well but you can see all the little dots in here now here's a little trick to help bring out that design a little bit take a little bit of flour and we're going to rub it in those holes and it's going to highlight where we need to make our cuts let's do that right now so you can see i have a little bit of flour here and i'm just going to take a little bit of it and we're going to just rub it in. Watch it come alive here for us. You see that pattern starting? Gets in those little teeny holes. That just helps us. Sometimes you don't need to do it, but you know, I find it does help. So we rub that in here. That's all we need, just a little tiny bit. Let's brush it clean. Can you see that now? Pretty good. So now we know where we need to carve. It's pretty good. So basically we want to leave all the, the dark stuff that was on our pattern, we want to leave that on our watermelon. And then all this white is where we want to carve away. So we're going to carve that away. And then I'll probably put a, either a square or maybe a round border around it to help highlight it and bring out those cuts that we did, you know, to provide some contrast. So let's make those cuts now. Okay, so as mentioned, you could use an X-Acto knife or a little paring knife, whatever you happen to have. You know, if you're going to do this a lot, you may want to get, you know, these little X-Acto knives because they're a little bit more, uh, have more precision in them that you could utilize there. So as we've already mentioned, and I'll show you the cover of that book again, we want to leave the dark, which is this, you know, black area here, and we want to carve out the white. So we're going to be car leaving this part of the you know the mortar board here for the graduation and we want to carve away down this part to leave that to accent it to bring it out so i'll use this little knife here to do it basically we're just connecting the dots with the knife at first kind of make a line in it and not going too deep you know we don't want to cut down into the red part of the watermelon but we do need to make a cut so it's easy to remove uh, the skin of the watermelon, which I'll show you in just a second. So I'm going to just trace along here, along this whole design. And again, uh, a little tip to help you there. When you're cutting into the melon, your cuts need to be straight. So don't angle your knife because that gets underneath it. You want it to keep it as straight as possible. So again, if you don't have an X-Acto knife, you can use a paring knife, but you know, maybe just adjust up on the, you know, choke up on the uh, paring knife, and I'll show you that now. So here's my paring knife. So instead of trying to cut it like this or like this, it's hard to control. So, you know, I would come up here near the blade, just be careful with your fingers here, and then just do it like this. You know, you can cut along that way. See how I'm doing that? but it's a little bit more unwieldy, plus you're kind of close to the blade, so that's where that X-Acto knife comes in a little bit easier because you have this little holder part here, so it's easier to do. So again, just don't angle it, just keep it nice and straight and make those cuts. There we go. Then down along the bottom here. Excellent. So this is like, you know, patience, like painting or anything else. It's very therapeutic. You should do this. You know, just taking your time. No rush. And these will hold too. And I'll show you some tricks on that. 
uh, when we get done here. But you know, you just after you get your carving all done, we're gonna just wrap it in plastic wrap, saran wrap, and you put it in the refrigerator, and that will hold. You know, we used to do this on the cruise ships and at the country club for our Sunday brunches. We wouldn't make these on Sunday. We'd probably make them on you know Tuesday or Wednesday of the week, and then we just wrap them up. And then that morning of the brunch, we just take them out and we do any last minute details, and we go out and put them out on display. Sometimes you can wrap them back up if they haven't been out too long and use them you know for another buffet you know so you can get multiple uses out of these and then uh, also once it's done we'll rub this with oil to make it really shine now when you get to these little edges and if you can see that here it's a little point you don't want to try to make it round what I would do is I would go straight down to the point like this and then take your knife out turn the knife and then start up this way right there it makes it a much cleaner cut than to try to make it round you know if it's a round area like that you can just you know make the the round cut yourself but when it comes to a point like that take your knife out and then go straight down much easier okay i pretty much got this bottom part done uh, right up to here i don't know if you can see those lines so uh, you know that's why it's helpful being in this little tray because now i can turn it and work on the top part you know wherever i need to you know as i carve it out so we'll just finish up the top, get that little point there. And then uh, we can start removing what we need to remove. Oh, let me get this line here. Coming around. And then we can look at this, and I can see that that's a tassel, so it's supposed to cut in and then have that little circle here. So I can have a point of reference. come up to this little spot and cut back around it and down. Okay, now I gotta cut this into a circle, which is kinda hard, so I just kinda make little cuts. I'm gonna keep that knife straight. Don't angle at the blade, because we'll lose a little piece of green here that we need to keep. We angle it too much there. That's good. Okay. I think we're good to go. Let me just double check it. Okay, so now we gotta take our carving here. We're gonna remove all of this white. So there's many ways you can do that. You know, if you just have your, you know, your knife, you could just cut away those little parts or you can get the adapters. This one's a square one. And you can kinda, you know, where you already cut those lines in, just remove that watermelon in between it. So we wanna leave the green here, we want to make this part white. Once you get it started, you can pretty much scrape it and get it kind of deep. But, you know, if you get more advanced at it, you can get, you know, as I mentioned earlier, this Exacto kit here. And, uh, you know, it has all these extra tips in it and stuff. And these round ones are very helpful for that. And there's a square one here I like for big cuts that you can attach. So you can see I already attached one onto this. A little bit of a scraper here and then you can just you know get in here and kind of pull it you know again don't go too deep you don't want to gouge it out too much but taking your time so you can see how it's taken all that off you know so we're getting into that white there or there's little you know you things like that you can buy them in the hobby store for you know clay and things like that you find different ones and those will work too you can get in there and scrape off that extra in there. So whatever works, I'm gonna use a combination of stuff here, depending on how big the line is that I need to take away. But basically we're just taking out all of this white and I'm gonna cut a line on the top here to highlight that, a white line, and you'll see that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and periodically I'll check in and show you where I'm at and then I'll show you the finished carving when I'm done. So once you get out here into the bigger stuff, you don't have to be as careful you know, you just kind of gouge it out here a little bit and then later on we'll smooth it out and then you can cut that off and then uh, take it right off, you know, getting the white. When you get into the detail in here, this is where you got to be precision. So you can see I take my knife and I'm cutting away from my design. So if my knife slips, then you're just going to get underneath that skin a little bit there. And we're going to remove it and I can cut it backwards this way now. See, so now I'm starting it. And then once you get it started, you can 
put your knife in there and just kind of scrape away. We'll, we'll do that later when we get into the real details. Right now we're just trying to do relief cuts to get the, you know, the design. You can see it right here. This is the spot right here that we're trying to use right there. And then we've got the mortar board coming up here on the top. So I'm just trying. Now this is going to be real delicate in here on you know, this part. So we're going to remove this little bit here. So again, use the tip of your knife or your paring knife, whatever you're using. And, you know, cut down a little deeper. And then you can just go underneath it and pop up that little bit. So yeah, I'm just removing it. Now I just made a little channel. I'm just going to kind of follow that channel. Once we get it cut, we can scrape away and that's going to make it a little bit more pronounced like that. Okay, I'm going to keep going here. Okay, so we're moving right along here on the carving. You can kind of get an outline there. Hopefully you can see this and you can see how it's supposedly looking here. So we got a little bit more to cut. Okay, I want to show you around this tassel part here, which is very delicate cut. So I'm going to show you that now you can see the outline. Okay, so now we've got most of the design carved out of it. So what we're gonna do is just gonna clean up in these little trenches here a little bit. And then we also, we need to make a little bit more relief cut like I did here on the side and on the bottom at the top so we can free out this mortar board and have it stand out. So what I've done is I've already drawn or cut in a line all the way across like this. So now I just gotta shave this part away. So cutting away from our design, I'm just going to use a paring knife and just kind of peel away this green. Don't want to go too deep, but just up to that line where I cut it. And then I just peel that away and that'll bring this mortar board jumping out a little bit more. So I'm going to do that now and then I'll show it to you as soon as I finish it. Okay, so it is done. I've cleaned it all up and that's what it, the finished product looks like. So here is the picture that we had. So I'll put that off to the side here and we can compare. Looks pretty good. And there's a the little scroll down there at the bottom. Now there's another thing you can do with this is we can put some highlights in the top to bring out some of the red of the watermelon to give it some contrast. So let's try that now.
Maybe we'll try it all the way around. That looks pretty good. We'll put some on the sides too. And I'm just using a basic V cutter. Um, you just take that decorative garnishing melon cutter. And again, I'll put this into the comments section so you can find it if you want. They're pretty cheap. And I'm going to make some more of these. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's done now. Now, sometimes I will take shortening if it's a real detailed cut and I'll rub that in. And I'll show you that in just a minute on my Statue of Liberty one. And that really accents it and puts a contrast in color. But well, this one has such large lines, we don't have to do that. But one thing I do recommend is take a little bit of you know, vegetable oil, canola oil on a, on a paper towel and rub that on that and it'll really bring out the shine. So you can see how we're doing it here. You just put a little bit all around the melon and it really brings out the green a little bit, makes it a little darker and gives it a little bit more color for you and uh, contrast. And then you just cut the bottom of this flat, put it onto a plate, put some fruit salad around it. Sometimes I'll carve out the back of this, put a hole in it, dig out the watermelon and put other fruit in it, you know, fruit balls and of cantaloupe, honeydew, some strawberries, berries in the top of this up in here, cut this off and fill the back of it and use it as a vessel. So you can do so many things with this. Okay, so there it is, the finished product. See, there's the picture, there it is. Very simple, got it out of this book, which I'll put down in the comments section if you wanna pick that one up yourself. It's got lots of them in there. Again, this one I cut a hole in the back so we can stuff it with you know, the melons back in there, cubed up or put into balls, put some berries in there, other fruits. So please give this a try. And uh, lastly, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We'd love to have you on the channel. Bye-bye now.